Yo, welcome to How to Write a Novel. So, uh, I found this little thing, the St. Clair Ravine, that gets me just a little bit away from the traffic. So we'll try this. It's also kind of raining, so I've just got the already suspect sound quality of recording on my phone. Now it's uh, my phone's tucked into my sleeve. It's probably not gonna sound great. But I got some thoughts about writing. It's amazing how much there is to say about this topic. Like, uh, I mean, when I started this podcast for almost the first two months, for like the first 50 some days, I did a podcast every day and it was no trouble. Like I had no trouble thinking of stuff to say. And then eventually it slowed down a bit, but lately I'm ramping up again. And I think it's just kind of that idea of energy begets energy, you know? You've got to spend energy to make energy. Just the fact that I'm writing every day, so it's always on my mind, so I just think of more and more stuff to say. <laughs> Man, this is probably a bad idea, but I mean, what's a $40 7-Eleven phone for if not to use it in the rain? You know, that's the whole, the whole point, is I don't have to be precious about it. Like, you know that uh, thing from the wacky movie thing of like, ah, oh, guy got pushed into the pool. But then once uh, smartphones became a thing, it's like, well, there'll be no more of that. Because my phone cost $800, and if you push me into a pool, I'll fucking break your face. If someone could push me into a pool, I don't give a shit. I could fall into the St. Clair Ravine, it'd be fine. So, uh, my last podcast, which was just uh, yesterday, <laughs> was about how I'm going to add to my docket of things I do each day. I'm going to add in coming up with a note, just coming up with a generic, some kind of note for one of my non-active stories. One of the stories I'm not working on right now. I just got to come up with one idea for any story, because these are the seeds that will pay off in the future. You know, when I get to that story, could be years down the, down the road, but I'll be very happy that I have these ideas. So today what I did is, uh, it's the fucking weekend, it's Saturday. I was in no hurry to get out of bed because I was like, ah, oh, it's the weekend. Every fucking coffee shop is gonna be fucking slammed. And it was, <laughs> you know, I managed to find a little seat at the old local Tim Hortons today, but yeah, just way more busy in the weekend. The weekends are a pain in the ass. So yeah, it's just like, just laying in bed, like, bah, whatever, what's the hurry? And I decided, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna lay here until I think of an idea for today. I used to do this when I used to draw comic strips, and uh, that's what I would do a lot, is like, they're really non sequitur, nonsensical comics, but it's like, I'm just gonna lay here till I think of an idea. And that's obviously a luxury that uh, if you got a strict alarm got to get up, got to go to work. Obviously you can't do shit like that, so I'm not recommending that. I'm just saying that's what I did today. Man, I hate that shit, by the way. Holy fuck, like, you know, my last job was uh, this cheesecake shop in Vancouver. And the day that I quit is not coincidentally a day I had to open the shops. I had to get up at like 5.30 in the morning. And uh, man, there was a lot of employees there. There was like 20 or so of us. And I got along with everybody, every single person, except one. So I woke up early in the morning. I had to work with that one chick that I didn't get along with. And she was being a dumb piece of shit. <laughs> Cause look, I got my problems, but I'm a pretty fucking agreeable guy. If you don't get along with me, particularly in a work scenario where I'm being polite, it is your fault. It is not on me. There was something wrong with that girl. She sucked. Anyway, that's why I quit. And it's like, I'm not, I'm not dealing with this. It was, it was a little bit fun to just hold up the line of customers and just be like, are you going to stop? Do you want me to go home? I'll go home right now. I don't care. It was a little fun, but not... Social conflict is really never that fun. Would have been more fun if she was just a cool person and didn't act like an asshole. But anyway, I quit that day. I was hanging on by one finger and she stomped my final finger. I'm getting off topic. So uh, yeah, the idea I came up with today, very, very small idea, but it's uh, this one story that it's very early stages. I don't have very many ideas for it. It's kind of just taken from an old Paul Pope comic. There's this comic called Heavy Liquid that is really good. I really like it. 
I've stolen from it before. <laughs> the heavy liquid itself, I kind of modified that idea. It's like this weird drug that came from outer space. And uh, I might use that in another story, a similar type of thing. I guess that's a, a side piece of advice. Don't worry about stealing. Everybody steals. It's just called inspiration, you know? Just change it. Just twist it to your own story. And it's not stealing anymore. It's just an idea that you had based on someone else's idea. Then you obviously got to bring your own fucking flavor to it or else that's horrible plagiarism. But everybody is inspired by something. So in that story, Heavy Liquid, I'd forgotten about this, but last time I reread it, there's this girl gang that they just wear jeans and wife beaters. Which, is there another word for wife beater? That is the most politically incorrect term ever, but I have no idea how else you would describe that shirt. White, sleeveless, stretchy shirt? Like, what the fuck do you call that? Anyway. Basically, that's why I have... Uh, no real ideas for this story yet, because that's really all it is, is I'm just like, I just want more of that girl gang. They're so cool. I just want to write a story about them. So I can't remember if in Heavy Liquid, if they all have different colored jeans or not, because it's a black and white comic. So I don't remember if that's my idea or if I also stole that from Paul Pope. I'll have to reread it sometime. But this story, the idea is just this girl gang where they all wear wife beaters, but they all have different colored jeans. Green Jeans is the main character, Red Jeans is the leader. That's really all I know. And yeah, I feel like that was in Heavy Liquid. I think that is just straight up Paul Pope stuff. Anyway, the idea I had today was just that they should have shoelaces that also match the color of their jeans. And that's it, that's the big idea, that's all I had. But that's good enough, that'll do. Then I went to the Tim Hortons, fucking wedged myself in, did all my little work for the day, but on my novel in particular, how I mentioned yesterday that I finished a chapter. Pretty big event to finish a chapter. And this is the closest that I come to taking a day off is when I finish a chapter. Because basically, it's, uh, it's just sort of like I just... Today all I did was very minor clerical work. Like this really is kind of like just taking a breath, taking a breather. It's like you made it to the end of the chapter, it's not quite giving myself the day off, but almost. Because as I write, I got all my disparate notes, so I pull those together. But then as I write, if, uh, you know, as each sort of beat of the chapter happens, I write it and then I segregate it off into its own folder. Just a folder of rough. It's just called rough. <laughs> and this chapter ended up being broken into seven pieces in my rough folder. Just out of curiosity, let's see what those pieces were called. Let's get rain on all of my devices, why not? So chapter 27, the segments were Purple Room, Enter, Climb, Leap, Suits, Homogeny, and Leap number two. <laughs> why am I even, this means nothing. Anyway, the point is, that's the chapter, it's all done. So all I did today is I took those seven parts and I copy and pasted them together into the full chapter and then titled that chapter 27, version one. See, like the rough segments, that's pre-version one. That's not even, you know, version one is just the first draft, the first full draft of the chapter. And it actually takes a couple minutes because it's awkward to do on a phone, even though I've got a phone with a keyboard, to cut and paste segments from different files and put them together, it's a little tricky. So I really kind of got to be careful to make sure I do it right and I don't miss any pieces and I don't double up pieces and it's just, it's okay. So that's really all I did today. But then I took that whole chapter, put it in the first pass complete side of my little project. And now it's just, there you go, it's out of my mind, it's done. Chapter 27, the first draft is done, and I just leave it and I move on. And that's really what I want to talk about today is, this is one of those things, it's a very small thing, but that I think really does help and really turned out to be important, is this idea of just keeping the forward momentum. Like now that that first draft of this chapter is done, 
that I just put it aside and tomorrow I'll move on to chapter 28 and I won't look at the thing again in any serious way until this whole book is done. And that really helps mentally, I think, and it's not something I used to do. In the olden days, now that I've got this chapter done, I would have read it over. It seems logical, right? It seems like a natural thing to do. All right, here's the first draft of this chapter. This would be a perfect time before I move on to reread it, read it over, do another draft or two, make sure it's okay, then move on to the next chapter. And I never realized at the time how, how damaging that is. It's almost cataclysmic. Like it's such a small thing. And it seems like, I mean, this seems contradictory. It seems like the wrong advice. Of course you would want to read it over. Of course you would want to do more drafts that can only make it better, right? But it really fucked me up. It really just ground me down to a halt. And it's just one of those things I only learned just through trial and error, just from experience that I've learned that this doesn't work well for myself. I'd seen that advice a lot of like, just keep moving forward. Let the draft be the draft. Don't worry about it. Don't go back and rewrite it right now. But I never really listened to it because I just thought that was the wrong thing. I never tried to follow that advice. But it really does help because say this chapter 27. So say instead of putting it aside today and like, all right, chapter 27 is done. Let's clear out my brain and get ready to do chapter 28 tomorrow. Say I sat down and edited this thing. First off, I might not have done it today. Maybe that would just be next on the docket. So tomorrow we're going to revise chapter 27. So it slows things down, but that's fine. I mean, I don't mind things being slow. As long as you're consistent, I think slow is fine. Slow might even be preferable. But it just, it's hard to, uh, it's hard to explain, but maybe, maybe the, you'll recognize this in your own writing, what I'm going to awkwardly try to express here, is revising as you go, it like, it gums up my brain. Like instead of this nice, clean feeling of momentum of like, that's done, worry about that later. Of course, that's not going to be the final draft. Of course, there's things about that chapter I'm going to need to change, but I'll worry about that on the second pass of the whole book. Put it aside. If I were to sit down and reread chapter 27, I guess just to cut to the chase, it instills doubt because it's not going to be great. It's certainly not going to be perfect. It's going to have a lot of problems and I'm going to go through and change things and re-edit stuff and do a second or third draft right now. And in order to do that, I've got to keep the whole book in my mind, which I've been writing for a year. So I don't remember the early shit at all. It's just, it's out of my head, but I got to try to remember all that stuff. I've got to try to edit in relation to that stuff. If I get caught up about some detail or I'm not sure if I've said something before or if some detail contradicts a previous detail. I got to go back and dig through all the other previous stuff. And because this is all first draft, it's just not going to be that good. And it's going to make me doubt the whole process. Every time it does this, it makes me feel like I'm not good at writing and that this is no good. And I just get demoralized and it just feels like a drag. Suddenly this like project, instead of being a nice fun, like I finished a chapter. Yeah, I should feel good about this things are moving. The train is moving forward. Instead, it's like, fuck, this thing is no good. <laughs> this has all these problems and it feels like this incredible weight, this incredible burden. Oh man, how am I going to fix this? Why did I ever think I could do this? I spent all this time and this book is no good. This is going to be trash. It's just, I don't get positive feelings and positive associations from editing midway through a project. I just feel bad. I feel overburdened. I feel stressed. I feel disappointed in what I've done. And I think the ultimate joke is these edits aren't going to work. They're not going to be any good because I'm not in that right mindset. I'm not reading through a complete draft. So I don't have the previous chapters in mind. I don't remember what just happened. 
everything is just a, a miasma of confusion. <laughs> and I just think that's not a good mindset to put yourself in. And again, like I said, it's ultimately not going to help. If I leave this chapter right now, draft one, just leave it and move on. Or if I spend today and spend tomorrow and spend however long banging out a second, third, fourth revision, it doesn't matter. Like when the whole book is done and when I go back to do a second draft of the full book, both versions are going to need changes. Both versions aren't good enough. So it's just like, it's just like crippling yourself and demoralizing yourself and just putting yourself in front of the firing squad for results that are still not going to be what you need. The second draft should really be saved until everything is done and you can take a look at the whole project overall and you've got a sense of the whole thing. And then it'll be fun. It'll be way more fun to go back and revise. Whereas to do it midway through, I mean, hey, maybe it's different for you. I'm just telling you how I feel, but it's just like, it just sucks. Every time it just sucks. And I was so much happier when I finally convinced myself to stop editing as I go and to just move on, just keep moving forward. It's a, a technique that I learned writing my nonfiction book. I bring it up a lot, but a lot of this stuff I learned from this book I wrote about the video game, The Last of Us, just a nonfiction book about a video game that I wrote that I put out for free. Didn't set the world on fire, but it taught me a lot. This is where I really solidified my habit of working every day and this is where I got comfortable with the idea of just moving on. And I think it was valuable in that sense because it's just, it's a nonfiction book. It can be a lot less structured. And it's just about a video game, you know? It's a huge book, but it's still, it's light entertainment. It's, it's not a novel. It is okay if it's kind of disjointed and kind of weird and sort of not that good. Because I wasn't even trying to get it published. I just put it out on my website. Threw it on fucking Reddit, whatever. I'm making YouTube videos about it now. So it removed a lot of the stress of expectation and just taught me the value of momentum, of just moving on, of finding a way to work that makes me feel good about the project as opposed to a method of work that makes me feel like I've got a, an iron fucking ball clasped to my ankle that is dragging me to the depths of the ocean. I know I'm using dramatic imagery here, but it's true. It is so true that like, I, I hate the feeling of revising writing while I'm in the process of writing. It feels so bad and it makes me demoralized about a project unfairly because this project is, it's unfinished. I'm midway through. Of course it's a mess. It's supposed to be a mess. I shouldn't be rubbing my own nose in the fact that it's a mess. It doesn't help. The benefits are small if not, perhaps non-existent, you know? Because again, this all needs to be revised again later, no matter what I do now. And it feels so bad. It just doesn't feel good. Whereas, hey, draft one's done. Take all my little segments paste them together into one file, call it chapter 27, put it aside. Worry about that next year when the book's done and it's time to revise it. But for now, it is done and it just feels good. And it's a little victory lap. And like again, like I said, I didn't do very much today. On these days where I finish a chapter, I just combine the files, put them aside. That's usually all I do. And I just bask in like, the yeah, you did it. A little congratulations to myself instead of diving right in and immediately going to look for the problems and look for the weaknesses and look for the shit that seems in the moment like it sucks because I don't have a proper view of the whole story. So yeah, that's enough. I'm just repeating myself. That's enough rambling, but that's what I was thinking today is it's a hard thing to express, a hard thing to uh, convince somebody of, I think, because I didn't believe it for years. I always revised as I went because I'm a serious writer and I want this to be as good as possible. 
but man, it feels better to not do that, you know, to finish your first draft and to let it be a mess and to just keep moving. The feeling of movement and momentum is way better and way more valuable and way more likely to bring a project to completion than bogging yourself down with mid-project edits all the way through. It's getting pretty cold out here, man. My fingers are freezing off. Got to wrap this up. But I will say too, it is, uh, it's amazing how hard it is to edit as you go because like it's so hard to keep a story in mind. Like once a book's all done and you can read the whole thing in the course of a week or so and have it all in mind, then, you know, you can make sure things all connect properly. But yeah, trying to think back over something that you've been writing for a long time and trying in media res to remember what the fuck's going on, it's just impossible. Just uh, my uh, little novelette, my much smaller story about the two girls trapped on an island. I just uh, wrote a chapter where one girl wakes up in the morning, hears the other girl singing kind of off in the distance. And I had her squinting against the sun. And I just wanted to go back and check, like, have I referenced where the sun sets and where the sun rises in relation to where the girls sleep? I just wanted to make sure that I didn't contradict myself there. So I went back to the previous chapter. It's only like, they've only been on the island a couple of days. So there's only one other day where they've gone to sleep. And uh, I saw that the sun thing worked out fine. You know, I didn't have them watching the sunset or anything. But then the next day, it's a very similar scene. The girl wakes up hearing the first girl sing. And I had that moment where I'm like, oh no, I just basically did the same thing twice. Should I go fix this? Should I go start mucking with it? Should I start editing? And I was like, no, don't worry about it. Like I had to force myself like, no, leave it. It's fine. Don't worry. If it is a problem, you can fix it later. You can fix it when the whole story is done and when you go back and do your second draft. And then I'm glad I left it because then as I thought about it more throughout the day, I thought, There's, that's not even a problem. It's fine that she wakes up every morning hearing the other girl sing. That can just be part of the story. Hey, doggy. <laughs> hey. Hey. Yeah, that can just be part of the story. That can just be how it goes, that the younger girl always wakes up first and always sings in the morning. Why not? And then I started thinking like, as the idea of this story is kind of one of the girls is gonna sort of get schizophrenic and start losing her mind. So that could even work in that as the, the girl who sings gets more and more weird, instead of this nice happy thing of like, hey, I'm hearing this other kid sing off in the distance maybe it gets creepy maybe she sings weird stuff right into the first girl's ear you know just quietly sings creepy scary schizophrenia songs into her ear you know and i was like yeah this isn't even a problem this actually could be fine this could work but i guess it's similar to uh i remember one of my earlier podcasts talked about how how it's actually hard to slow down that doing a small amount of work each day and just the slow continuous grind can be a good thing you can have a lot of benefits to not pushing yourself because if you push yourself too much your work could suffer and you might just not have fun writing anymore and then you'll just stop but it's it's hard it's hard to work less it can be hard to convince yourself not to push and this is very similar. It's hard to convince yourself not to edit as you go. Because it feels like you're, you're cheaping out on the process. Like you're just not doing everything you should be doing. You're not taking it seriously. You're not working as hard as you should. But it's just way better. I like it so much better to just do a first draft and to not look at it again and to not think about it and to just move the fuck along. The closest I came to doing any edits on the novel, that episode I did uh, when I was in Montreal about uh, alien slang, 
I did go back and I rewrote a bunch of the aliens uh, dialogue in the slang method that I came up with. And that was kind of cool because it was a really light look back. I was really only reading dialogue and I was really pleased with how the new dialogue turned out. But even still, I haven't done that since. Like I'm not gonna go back and alienify the dialogue from here on in until I get to the end. Like I'm just writing the rest of the aliens dialogue. You know what, I should cut all this part. That's too much. It's too much details that don't make sense. I'm getting too deep. All right, that's it for today. I hope, uh, I hope this sounded all right. And I still got water all over my phone. I'm not sure how I managed that, but whatever, man. So, uh, Song of the Day, this doesn't relate to fucking anything. It's just this, uh, this band called Megative, like negative with an M. And, uh, I saw this video on a plane. I was on an Air Canada flight, and this is this little Canadian band that is, uh, not popular. None of their videos on YouTube have a lot of views or anything. If I remember right, it's the singers from this alt-country band called The Stills. That I remember somebody back in the day recommended The Stills to me, but I really never listened to them. Anyway, this is more like a dub reggae kind of band. And uh, it's just so weird that I found it on a plane, you know, that you can find cool songs that you like while hurtling through the sky. Instead of watching whatever in-flight entertainment shit they had, I just kept rewinding this song and playing it over and over. <laughs> and uh, I listened to it like 16 times on that flight. And I love it. It's called I Can't Do Drugs Like I Used To. And it's just a great little song. So uh, let's listen to that. Thanks for listening to my ramblings. I hope they were useful. If not, maybe the next one will be more useful. All right. Thanks again. I never give out my deets. I don't know. KeithCourage.com is where you can get this podcast. I'm Keith McNally on Twitter. I don't know. You can find me if you want to find me. All right. I will talk to you later. Goodbye. Dripping off me